Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking all about amplifiers and transistors. So a few uh, videos ago, Music3121 asked, what is bias voltage? Okay, I didn't tell you to fucking do that. All right, anyways, uh, where are my notes, you bastard? All right, there we go. So to understand what bias current is, we need to, we need a basic Oh, what was I writing? We need a basic understanding of a push-pull amplifier. So on the left we have a PNP transistor and on the right we have an NPN transistor. The arrows show how conventional current flows through the transistor. For an NPN transistor, when a little bit of current flows into the base, the transistor turns on and allows current to flow from the collector to the emitter. For a PNP transistor, when current flows out of the base, the transistor turns on, and current can flow from the emitter to the collector. So, the base to emitter voltage must reach about 0.7 volts for an NPN, or negative 0.7 volts for a PNP, in order for the transistor to turn on. This is important, because it means for an amplifier like this, the input voltage must surpass 0.7 volts in either direction before the output begins to change. This creates a dead zone of input voltage where the output voltage is unaffected. When the input signal does pass 0.7 volts, the output voltage will be 0.7 volts less than what it should be. This screenshot from a real oscilloscope shows the distortion that results. Channel 1 shows a relatively clean sine wave being fed into the input of the amplifier. Channel 2 shows the signal from the output of the amplifier. The flat parts of the waveform show the dead zone. Also note how the output waveform is only 660 millivolts peak to peak, whereas the input voltage is close to 2 volts peak to Fuck! Where the input is 2 volts peak to peak. The difference is pretty close to 1.4 volts volts, which is the sum of the two voltage drops. Great! Now that we know why the amplifier behaves like this, what is the solution? The textbook solution is to add two silicon diodes like so. Silicon diodes have about the same voltage drop as the base to emitter junction of a transistor. Adding two of them like this creates a 1.4 volt drop, which puts both transistors <clears throat> just at the threshold of turning on. In the ideal world, this would solve all of the issues I described before. However, this doesn't work as elegantly in the real world. So let's look at the amplifier design that I used for my amplifier. This amplifier uses what's called a bias servo. It allows the voltage drop between the bases of the output transistors, in this case the driver transistors, to be fine-tuned. For a class AB amplifier, we want to set it to the point where both output transistors are just barely turned on and passing current when the input is silent. This current is known as the bias current. This design calls for 75 milliamps. To measure this current, we could break apart the circuit and insert an ammeter, but this would be a pain in the ass. The method provided with this schematic is to measure the voltage drop across these two resistors. Using Ohm's law, we can determine the current by measuring the voltage, and vice versa. If we want 75 milliamps of current flowing, we multiply it by 0 0.66 ohms, and that gives us 50 millivolts. Now we just put a voltmeter across the two resistors and adjust the pot until the voltage is 50 millivolts. So, and that's the end. I hope this helped clear things up. Um, yeah, talk to you later. So anyways, what you're doing is just measuring from the collector of that transistor to the collector of that transistor, and same for here. And we're getting about 36 millivolts, which is a little bit low, but um, it's acceptable.